health care is on our mind, and a new group or groups are weighing in. These are groups that I think it's fair to say that are liberal or to the left religiously. Uh, one of their uh, groups that's been in the news uh, weighing in on the health care issue, because those on the right certainly have been involved in this, is uh, Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good. And joining us is their spokesperson, uh, John Gehring. Uh, John is the Deputy Communications Director and Senior Writer for Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good. Previously, he was the Assistant Director for Media Relations at the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, which is certainly a major, major um, outfit on issues like this. Hey, John, welcome to the Fred Thompson Program. Thanks, Tom. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I, I saw this piece yesterday. Is it fair to say you would characterize your group, and there were a number of you guys listed as more to the left and, and mixing that sort of perspective in with faith? Well, I think what we can say about that is the faith community is really united behind health care as an urgent moral crisis. And I think on the call yesterday, we had uh, people of faith from varying perspectives. I mean, certainly, you know, Christian ministers out in various communities talking about how this issue is affecting parishioners and congregations. And, you know, we did so from a universal perspective, not a partisan one. And we really believe that the faith community has a significant role to play in speaking up both from a moral perspective, but also from a Catholic, uh, okay. you know, both from a practical right. perspective as well. Would it be fair to say that a principle here is the bottom line, we have to be our brother's keeper and have universal health care? Is, is that the overriding perspective? Absolutely. And from our perspective, you know, in terms of Catholic social teaching, I mean, Catholic teaching is clear that quality and affordable health care is central to creating a just society. You know, the fact that there are 47, almost 50 million Americans without health care in the wealthiest and the most powerful nation in the world is for us, you know, a moral scandal, but also a political failure. Okay, now I, I got that. Let, let's stop with that. And that is part of um, a Catholic teaching, and a lot of times the social justice part of this, you're right with the bishops. But, sure. uh, John, uh, what disturbs me here is that message. How about the rationing of care that we're afraid of, particularly towards senior citizens, the vibe that's being created by Obamacare and by the president himself, and that we're going to be looking in a mechanistic way, in a dollar and cents way, at the end of life, isn't that an equal moral principle? And I find that to be objectionable if we're going to be bringing spirituality into this debate. Well, sure. I mean, you know, the way we come at this is, again, from the broader moral principles here. I, I think there's there's some misinformation about there out there that needs to be cleared up in terms of, you know, uh, government takeover of health care or Obamacare or socialized medicine. I, I don't think that's a fair characterization of, of the various proposals that are moving through Congress at this time. So it's not as if the president behind closed doors is, is building our health care system. And I, and I think that the faith community in particular, you know, from varying perspectives, again, you know, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or whether you're an independent, the faith community really has an obligation, uh, you know, to truth tell here. To, to Well, to, well we are telling mm -hmm. the truth, John. I mean, I'm looking at uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, his writings, uh, talking about who should get intervention or not. Rahm Emanuel uses him as an advisor. Uh, the president and others have talked about scrutiny of the end of life. And I think from a Catholic perspective, I'm looking at Cardinal Regali here and others. They're concerned about this. They're concerned about abortion under this. Yes. And I'm well, wondering, yeah. as a Catholic, well, wouldn't those be I mean, concerns? Absolutely. On the issue of abortion, you know, yeah, we, right. we believe that passing comprehensive health care reform is going to be enough of a heavy lift that getting, you know, sidetracked by a very complicated and divisive debate on abortion is a mistake. You know, we believe very strongly that as, you know, the proposals, and there's a number of them out there, move through Congress, we believe that maintaining the current policy of not using federal taxpayer funds for abortion procedures and retaining, you know, very strong, conscious protections for healthcare workers okay. is critical. So I'm glad to hear absolutely that. Absolutely okay. on that. Absolutely. All right, so the, the bottom line then is, is there a feeling too, and now the articles, you didn't do this, but the articles that were written about your group and others, is that uh, the Christian right has dominated the conversation around this, and I guess people of faith that are listening on that side, they don't feel they're hearing from their pastors, and they're not called to believe that they have a moral obligation toward universal health care. How would you tell them that they do? 
Well, I mean, that's part of this initiative that we launched yesterday on the call, and we're calling it 40 Days for Health Reform. And this included a, a new national TV ad that aired on CNN last night, uh, Christian pastors talking about the very real impact that they're seeing in their communities around this. We're going to be reaching out to members of Congress on this issue. Uh, you know, on Wednesday, August 19th, there's going to be a national uh, call in where uh, people across the country can talk to faith leaders about this issue, and we've invited the president mm-hmm. to be a part of that call. So, okay, he can but, but hear John, it. I'm so, sorry to interrupt, John, but I'd like to bottom line you. Does this mean then to be, in your view, the view of your organization, a Christian, to be spiritually correct on this, if I'm taxed more, that's my burden as a Christian to be my brother's keeper to support universal health care? No, we would, we would, look, here's the issue. The issue is that we speak about this as a, as a, as a moral imperative. And clearly, you know, the particulars of how this gets worked out is, is complicated and it's difficult. And we can disagree. You know, we could, people of goodwill can disagree over the, the, the details of how this, is, how this is done. And, and certainly, you know, we're having good conversations about that. But the bottom line is the faith community is united on the issue that, you know, the fact that millions of Americans, in a wealthy nation don't have health care, that's a tragedy. I mean, we just asked our, our members, we sent out an email yesterday asking our members to share their stories about health care uh, with mm-hmm. us. And we were blown away by, you know, the fact that people, even if they have health care, are struggling. And there are so many who don't. I mean, and this is, again, this is not, we really think it's a mistake to make this a partisan issue or a left or a right issue. I mean, for us, it's a matter of justice, and it's about what's right and wrong, not what's left or right. All right. Well, John, thank you very much. Is there a website where folks can go to to check out what Catholics uh, in Alliance uh, for the Common Good? Sure, uh, absolutely. www.catholicsinalliance.org. And if, and if your listeners want to get more information about the uh, call-in on health care, um, it's www.faithforhealth.org. And that's for F-O-R, not the number four. Thank you, John. Thanks very much for the time today. We absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.